Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to run original Xbox games on your PC using an awesome emulator called CXBX Reloaded. Now this will work on a laptop or a desktop as long as you're running Windows, but uh, when it comes to playing the games at full speed, it really depends on what kind of power your PC has. Personally, I've had much better luck using an NVIDIA GPU, but I've also been able to get this up and running on the 4000 series and 5000 series Ryzen APUs with built-in graphics. I was also able to upscale a little bit. And when it comes to the PC I'll be using in this tutorial, it's powered by a Ryzen 3600 6-core CPU with an NVIDIA GTX 1650. This is a $550 HP pre-built machine that I picked up from Walmart a few months ago. In order to get this set up and working correctly, I would highly recommend using a controller, but you could map a keyboard. But uh, if you're looking for a decent controller for your PC, I can highly recommend the Xbox One controller. It'll connect over Bluetooth or USB. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I run my games. We're going to go over the settings in the CXBX Reloaded emulator. And when it comes down to it, it's actually quite simple to get this up and going. Alright, so now that you've decided you want to emulate original Xbox games on your PC, let's go ahead and get this set up. First things first, right off the bat, you're going to need some original Xbox games. Personally, I rip my own from the discs, and when you rip those, it should be an ISO, but in order to get this to work with CXBX Reloaded, it needs to be an XBE file. So we'll go into here to Dead or Alive 3, and as you can see, we have a file called default.xbe. This is what we're going to launch the game with inside of the CXBX Reloaded emulator. Personally, I back up my own games from original discs and then convert them to XBE. And there are tons of tutorials online on how to convert an ISO to an XBE. But then again, there are other ways to go about getting these games. So the main thing you're going to need to get this set up is the CXBX Reloaded emulator. Link for this is in the description. On their website, they do have some information here and there. One of the most important ones is the compatibility list. So if we head over here, you can see we have playable, in-game, boots, nothing, untested. Playable games right now, 157 out of 1,036. It might not seem like a lot, but this emulator is getting better and better every single day. So we're going to have to go ahead and download this. What we want to do is just choose download now. And we're just going to download the latest version. And this gets updated very frequently. We'll just choose download. Now this is going to be in my downloads folder. What I'm going to do is just place this on my desktop for easy access. So now that we have our games and the emulator, we need to extract the emulator. I'm just going to right click. I use WinRAR. Link for this will be in the description. We now have our CXBX reloaded folder. We're going to go ahead and open this up. And I personally recommend creating a shortcut for the CXBX.exe. Right click, create shortcut. From the shortcut, I right click this, properties, compatibility, and I always make sure I run this as administrator. Now we can go ahead and start this up. It's gonna ask us if we wanna use this emulator in portable mode, and that just means that everything's gonna be saved inside of this folder here, and I always do this, so I choose yes. And the emulator is now started up. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my screen a little bit. Okay, so first things first, there's a few things we need to set up inside of the emulator. As you can see up here, we have File, Edit, View, Settings, and Emulation. We're going to be working mainly with the Settings tab here. And once this opens up, as you can see, it can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff in here, but I'm going to go through it kind of slowly and just show you exactly what I use to get this up and running on my PCs. And the first one being Video. So I go to Configure Video, and from here... You'll see our display adapter is that GTX 1650 Super, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Our Direct3D device, Direct3D HAL, I'll leave it here, hardware accelerated. Display resolution. Now, if you're on a lower end system, I would recommend keeping it at default, but you can always test this. Usually what I do is scroll all the way down here because most of the time I am using a 1080p display and I go to 1920 by 1080 60 Hertz. Now this is the display resolution, it's not the rendering resolution of the game. When we go down one here, this is our rendering resolution and this will affect game performance. We have 1x all the way up to 12x. Personally, I keep it around 128960, maybe sometimes 1920 by 1440. I'm just going to go with 2x here. And again, you can experiment with this to get better visuals out of your Xbox games, but uh, you have to have a pretty high-end system to go much higher than 4X. 
but I'm going to go with 2. I force V-Sync, so it locks it at 60 or 30, depending on what the game runs at. And that's about it for the video configuration, so I'm going to choose Accept. Next thing we want to do is head back to Settings, and we need to configure an input device. I'm using the Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, so I'm going to go to Config Input. Port 1. You can choose what gamepad you'd like to use. Most of the time, I go with the Gamepad S, which was the smaller original Xbox controller. Configure, and now from here, this is basically self-explanatory. We're using X input because I'm using that Xbox controller. It's connected to my PC right now. All I need to do is map the correct buttons. So if I press A here, I'm going to press A on my controller. Same thing down the list. B, X, Y. For the black and white buttons, I use my shoulder triggers. Start's going to be start. Back's going to be our select button because it wasn't called select on the Xbox controller. Analog stick, up, down, left, right. This will be L3. Same thing with the right stick. Up, down, left, right, R3, D-pad, and just go through the motions here. Before we exit, I always like to save my config, so I'm just going to set this as Xbox. You can name it whatever you'd like. We'll choose save and close out of here. So now we have our video configured and our controller configured. But uh, one last thing I like to change here in settings. Scroll down here till we go to hacks, speed hacks, and run Xbox threads on all cores. This is a six core Ryzen third generation CPU, and it definitely helps out. There are some games that this doesn't work well with, but you can always disable it from the settings. So settings, Hacks, speed hacks, run Xbox threads on all cores. If the game's not working for you, and you've already checked that that game works in the compatibility list that they have on their website, then try to disable it. Now we're ready to actually start up a game. So from File, we're going to go to Open XBE. We're going to navigate to where we have our original Xbox games. Mine are on my desktop. OG Xbox games. I'm going to go with, uh, let's do DOA3. It's automatically going to detect that XBE file here, and that's the only one that's going to be listed here. Default.xbe. We're going to double click. Might give us a little bit of a warning, and if you'd like to remove these warnings here, we can actually go back to settings and just ignore invalid XBE signature, invalid XBE sections. You can actually just uh, enable these here. Personally, I usually do that. So now we have DOA3 loaded up in the CXBX Reloaded emulator. To start the emulation, emulation, start. Press Control Alt on your keyboard, it'll bring it into full screen mode. There is a setting to change this to go to full screen anytime you start it up, but personally I try to avoid that because I have gotten stuck inside of the emulator a few times. Unfortunately, there's no built in FPS counter, at least that I have found so far, so I just use Afterburner. I'm gonna go ahead and enable it now. This is just a third-party application to let me know what's going on with the PC while we're playing these games here. We have the FPS listed, CPU usage, GPU usage, and RAM. So we've got our controller set up. You'll just have to use it like a regular Xbox controller. And you can start playing your favorite Xbox games. And you can even up that rendering resolution. Right now, I'm sitting at 2x, so this is being scaled at 720p. But I could go a bit higher with this system here since I have that GTX 1650 Super. This does rely heavily on DirectX 9. Now in order to exit the game, since I went full screen by pressing Alt Enter, I'm going to press that again. It's going to bring my window down. That way I can kind of control the emulator here. I'm just going to stop the emulation. And we're going to start up another game real quick. So from within the emulator, we're going to go back to File, Open XBE, Locate our Games Directory, and find the XBE for said game. From there, we can start the emulation back up. And I'm actually glad it did this because every once in a while you will run into the game not starting the first time. All you need to do is go back up to emulation, start the game again. For some reason, I've had this happen a few times, especially with Jet Set Radio Future. But to go full screen, Alt Enter. But I'm gonna keep it in window mode right now just so you can see it is running on my desktop. So I'll press Alt Enter again. And we're now playing another original Xbox game on our PC. 
So for this game here, I do have to mute the sound, but I do want to get into a little bit of gameplay. Unfortunately, from the options menu, you just can't turn the music off. But sound is working with this emulator, as you can hear. So I've had really good luck with NVIDIA GPUs and the CXBX Reloaded emulator. I've run into more issues with AMD, especially integrated AMD graphics, but uh, last time I checked, the 4th generation Ryzen APUs and the 5th generation Ryzen APUs are working with this setup. And they're actually working quite well. The 5600G can emulate these games at full speed, but you know, in my experience, NVIDIA has always been the way to go. So that's it for this one. I hope this helped you get original Xbox games up and running on your PC. And if you could do me a favor, if you get this up and running and it runs well on your system, leave your specs down below. Even if it doesn't run well, I'd actually like to know what you guys are using along with this emulator. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, thanks for watching.